So the red mallee's basically finished flowering down here now. Well, it's got a, we've got a few little trees going here and there. But we thought we'd come down and see how our skateboards got on. Grab you guys a bit of honey before we're going to the next part of the season. Well, the girls are still fairly busy down here, so they're bringing some nectar back in. I mean, the other day when I was here, they were still ripening up some honey, so we're just going to take a little bit of the excess off the top, try to tidy up these layers that we've got a few extra supers on top of ourselves. So we just come down here and collect a bit of this liquid gold so you can get it on your toast. <laughs> Don't blow into the smoker, that's a fucking bright thing to do, Mr. Deco. Fuck it, hell. Oh, just see if we can set fire to ourselves. Now, if, you, if you're using petrol, don't do this bit, all right? Because it could be poof. That's why metho's a little less aggressive than petrol. Woo, oh, oh, blah, blah. Did you know if you drop the lit match into a drum of diesel, the match would just go out? Poof. You drop the lit match into a drum of petrol, you're dead. <laughs> You'd fucking take your head off. And do you know why that is, boys and girls? because the petrol has fumes and the diesel doesn't have as many fumes. So apparently it's the fumes that blow up. Because I was watching this up, it wasn't a documentary, but a bit of a thing. There was a dude out in the bloody Northern Territory when it was 52 degrees filling up his car and you could just see the vapor of fuel floating into the distance. And, a, and there was the comment, oh, yeah, I was thinking, would have made an interesting YouTube video, wouldn't it? With a bloke over the road, lit a smoke and <laughs> Well, anyway, sorry, I'm off track. Shit. Why is it like when the smoke always just follows you? How does that figure out where you are? I wonder which beekeeper actually invented the original smoker. Like, you know, what was he thinking? Was he in the kitchen and he was blowing on his fireplace and thought, I oh, wonder if I feel that full of bloody rags and smoke me bees with it. Because I'm assuming back in the day they just got a bloody branch and waved it at them and then they got all clever and stuck like this, so... You know. Anyway, anybody out there know who invented the smoker? Throw us a line and let us know. So we've got this super over here that didn't have an escape board, so we'll just show you the old school or the most annoying way you have to bloom and get the bees off when you haven't got one. Let's have a little look here. There's a few ladies running around. We we'll just give them a bit of smoke to chase them off a bit. Oh shit. Hold that thought. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to invent a little belt, you know, like a utility belt, and I can hang me hang me blooming hive tool around my waist. Maybe we could have a utility belt. Like Batman's utility belt. Instead of that, that could be the Bush B man's utility belt. <laughs> I wonder if we'd have the big, well at least we'd have the bee right, we'd have a big bee on the buckle. <laughs> I was thinking the letter B, but actually we could have a real bee. That'd be fucking fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> Do -do -do. Oh. It's not completely full, but it needs to go anyway. And then, if you have a look, you've got all the little ladies still working in here, so we'll shake them off. But then they can fly home, fly away home. It's a nice frame. There's not too many bees up here anyway. They're all off working. So we want to have a look in the top of the next one. Anyway, we'll put the, put the rag over this for a second. And we'll just go and have a look at the super underneath this super. Since we've got too many supers, uh, let's not do that again on a bloody sad year. Would have been good if we'd had a honey flow, we would have been right, but that didn't happen. Okey dokey doke. We'll see if we can get a frame or two up the top here. This is the this is the normally what would be normally the super. Actually talking about toast. Me and the lovely wife are down at Port Elliot on the weekend. That's a little coastal town down from where we live. And we're in this little crafty shop and they had all the normal, you know, crafty pickles and bits and pieces. And I picked up this jar and without my glasses on I thought it said Bangladesh style marmalade. And I thought, hmm, I didn't know they made marmalade in a Bangladesh style. Anyway, we get out there. I bought the thing because I thought I wanted some marmalade. And my dear wife, who's got her glasses on, I said to her, oh, I got some Bangladesh marmalade. And she goes, what? Give me that here. And of course, it actually says English marmalade, doesn't it? 
should make kind of make more sense, but anyway, I thought, anyway, it's very nice by the way. <laughs> oh god, wear your glasses even if you're in a shop. <laughs> <Idiot. laughs> How good does that look? Like? We'll just carry those two over and I'll grab, a, grab the two frames that are over there and come back. <laughs> so this super is the same super that was on the extra one on top of that one. So we're just gonna, gonna give them the, some of their unripened nectar back. We've got a little bit unripened nectar going here. So we'll give them that back. So we don't want them getting honey stuck or honey blocked, honey choked, honey something. I don't know, what's it called? We we'll just pop these couple back in here. And I reckon we've got one more full one. And then the ladies will have some space to keep working on. And then eventually, we'll get rid of all these extra supers. <laughs> Has been an arduous event of this excitement. Which one are we going to get with? That one. Is that the one? That one's going to be good. Borrow that one. And we'll give them back this one. Everything's all jolly sticky. <laughs> sticky bits everywhere. Come on, behave. I don't know how come they always end up twisted. Oh, you little beastie bums. Ah, so this might not be a 100% perfect example because there's a little crack at the back here. And I just noticed a couple of girls are sneaking in the crack because they're most ambitious, aren't they? <laughs> the little girls, they're like, oh, there's a free feed, we'll jump amongst that. Anyway, we'll see how the escape board works. So if, if there's a couple of bees hiding in here, it might be because this little, this little tiny bit. Oh, this is winter's project coming up. I tell you what, there's a bit of bee box maintenance. So there's a couple of thieving, <laughs> little thieving neighbors. But all in all, in comparison to having no escape board, they're much better. If you had a proper sealed lid, you wouldn't have any bees up here. So apologies to the serious cell boys that my lid wasn't exactly perfect for this demo. Well, we're running out of options, so this is what we've got. Just cut that little seal. Not that it should be very sealed. It's only been here for a little bit. And here comes all the robber bees already. Oh, they're hungry today. <laughs> up, up. Oh no, there's a hive tool in the dirt. Oh, yep. My hot top quality sheet cover. Oh, shit, that's a long way away. Oh, that's the other one, isn't it? That's number three. Oh, oh yeah, I tell you what. <sighs> it's interesting who made these blooming things too, isn't it? I wonder how he got on. I suppose he would have just been in the shed and thought, I'll oh, bend that bit around there. I wonder what it would have been originally. I'm sure it wasn't actually like somebody found something in their shed that did the job and they went, we could actually put that together and bloody get it manufactured. Or do you reckon he went down the engineer shop and said, can you just cut me up, bloody cut me up a thing with a sharp end? <laughs> A bit of a handle I can hang on to and a hooky bit on the end. <laughs> and I'm guessing that bit, I'm not sure what that bit's for. Is that for bloody hanging up in the shed or is that for tightening crap up? What's that about? Anyway, I'm sure some professional out there is going to let me know any minute now. Well, I think they work really bloody good. There's hardly any ladies here that have got stuck. And you check out, if we have a look here in comparison, I mean, the, like I said, those guys had a little few raiding bees on the top. But underneath the escape board, check out how busy they are. Like this is what normally happens when you come to get to the super. You got all these girls everywhere. So we've even got girls underneath here. So they're trying to get back to the cart.
Michelle, this is looking like a nice little bit of honey on board, so that should be good. By the way, while we're here, we might just nick over and we'll have a look at these citrus bees and see how they're getting on. Remember the girls in the tree? Well, they're the girls in the box now. But while we're here falling around, we might as well have a quick look at our orange bees, see how they're getting on. This is our orange tree bees. They're not looking over hectic, but they're still in here at least. See if we've got anybody getting organised. A bit of heaviness going on. They're not starving at least. Well, not yet. Well, I think I've shown you that before, but how cool is that? They're just building it as they want it. <laughs> There's a bit of new larvae in there, so there must be a queen in here somewhere, otherwise. Oh, there she is, even. Look at that. She's a nice colour. Not that that really means anything, but they more about the temperament. But anyway, that's good to know, that's good to know, is he still in there? She made it from the orange tree to the box. We'll put them back together, that's all we wanted to see. I think being that it's a fairly arduous season, they're probably going to spend their time in this one. In here, they'll probably, they'll probably see out the winter in this little newt box. Might just lift the lid off this newt box because they are... We'll just poke, we won't look through it, we'll just have a look to see what they're doing. Yeah, we're getting there, they're starting to fill out too. Well, goodness me, eh? Oh, I love this time of year. Bloody hell. At least it's, I don't know, what is it, about 30? No, it's not even 30, I think it was about 28 degrees. How bloody nice is that? Even feels like you're not going to die in this bee suit. And anyway, that's really good. The little orange bees are looking pretty cool. Back home we go, into the shed. Got ourselves a new extractor to put together, so we'll put that in the assembly line and we'll get some honey back on board for you guys so you can have a taste of some narrow leaf red mallee honey this is apparently. So they tell me, so yum yum yum, it tastes fucking hell, I tell you what, I can't wait to get some of this on my toast.